The first step in the stem cell transplant process is referred to as pre-collection. During this time, you will be undergoing mobilization. In this video, we will answer some frequently asked questions about the pre-collection process. Hello, I'm John Pagel. I'm the Chief of Hematologic Malignancies and the Director of the Stem Cell Transplantation Program here at Swedish Cancer Institute. So stem cells are, of course, very important cells in our body. There are many, many different types of stem cells. There are stem cells for really all types of tissues in a patient's body. But in particular, what we're talking about today are stem cells that are important for generating or forming blood cells, in particular, of course, normal blood cells. And these cells like to live in lymphatic tissue, what we call blood-like tissue, or in particular, in the bone marrow. These cells, we call them stem cells, are important because they actually can go on and form more of themselves, and they actually can go on to make normal, healthy, mature red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And those are the cells that we want to use, and in particular, those are the cells we want to use from each individual patient for their own specific stem cell transplant process. These cells are, of course, as I've noted, are located in the bone marrow but we have ways to make those cells come out of the bone marrow and circulate in the blood. So commonly, we will be able to isolate these cells from the blood without having to go into the bone marrow like we used to do. Now we can again get very high levels of the stem cells circulating in the blood, and we have techniques to isolate those cells directly from the blood. And once we've isolated those cells, we'll store them in the freezer for the time we want to do the stem cell transplant. This process that I just simply described is what we call mobilization of the stem cells and then collection of the stem cells. What is mobilization? How many days does it take? So commonly what we want to do is we want to get those stem cells coming out of the marrow and in a high number in the blood. And we can do that in a variety of ways and each way might be a little different depending on the clinical situation and that has to do with the specific patient and the specific disease of each individual patient. But in general, what we do is we use a growth factor, we call it GCSF, and we use that in a high dose. It's delivered as a subcutaneous injection, meaning into the skin. We commonly put it into the stomach or into the abdominal wall, and we will do that daily for perhaps multiple days somewhere between three, six, 10 days even sometimes. And that will help stimulate those cells, those stem cells in the marrow to come out of the marrow and circulate in the blood. But sometimes we also add some chemotherapy to that type of regimen as well. So you may experience that you might get some chemotherapy combined with the growth factor shots and that whole regimen will be very important for stimulating these cells and allowing them to circulate in high numbers in the blood where we can go and then collect them. Do I need someone to come with me for the injections of GCSF? Question about needing help or not with the shots. In general, no. Shots can be done even at home. Commonly, insurance will maybe make it where they need to be delivered in the clinic or in our infusion room. But that can be done with very little side effects and can be well tolerated, such that someone probably doesn't need to be with a patient for those types of shots or that procedure. For the stem cell mobilization, as we've just talked about, for getting the shots and generating those cells to come out of the marrow, we don't need a driver or a caregiver for that process. But we will need that for the subsequent transplant process. Are there side effects of the GCSF injection? Side effects happen with the injections of the growth factor. Most patients, the vast majority of patients, feel perfectly fine and have no side effects related to the growth factor shots. But sometimes some side effects can happen, and typically if they do happen, they are things like some pain in the bones. Usually it's very mild, but if it's significant, we control it with pain medications. Sometimes people might have a mild headache. It's rarely ever significant. And rarely somebody might have a little bit of nausea. But again, I want to stress, most of the time the growth factor shots have no side effects at all. 
who should I talk to if I have questions throughout the collection and transplant process? You will have a team, a transplant team, that will be intimately involved with your care. You can approach any of that team for help and guidance at any time. You will have contact information for the doctor, the doctors on call, how to reach the nurses, the social worker, and everybody that's intimately part of your team. There will always be access to your providers at all times through the transplant process and the recovery procedure.